I can feel your heartbeat And you didn't even say a word I can feel your heartbeat But you didn't even say a word Oh, I know pretty woman That you're loving me hurt Screen Gems specifically did not want to cast the show with musicians and singers. Um, the intent all along was to create a fake band and have all the actors lip sync. I remember somebody saying to me, why doesn't the Partridge family play Las Vegas? Why don't you go out on tour? And I kept saying, you don't understand, there is no Partridge family. You know, they were all studio singers and musicians. We were the sound of the Partridge family. We were hired guns. We were people you knew you could get it done well, on time, on budget, and that means a lot. Back then, if people sang for other people in any way, they didn't want the public to know that, you know, which is kind of silly, but that's the way they did it back then. Tom and John and Jackie were most successful, most talented singers. They taught me so much as, you know, a young, impressionable musician. We knew what the assignment was going in because it's a family show and, and, they, and families have a certain kind of blend and so forth. We just thought of ourselves as the kids, but since I was the only girl in the group, I had to sound like the young girl. Jackie was the smallest child. I was the next smallest. Well, it, was, was it would be more like, no, it would be more like Ron was Lori and I was Danny because I was singing the teenage bass. And those are some of the best musicians. There was a bunch of really feel-good music on the Partridge family. So I'm on the road, traveling free and easy. Gotta get on, gotta fill my life with living. Just tell everyone I've gone on the road. Screen Gems had that song, Let the Good Times In, and we had done it with the Love Generation, and that's the kind of sound that they wanted, which was us. Nothing so bad that it can't be a change in. Start rearranging life on a shelf. Life on a shelf. That whole genre of music grew out of the folk era. And then you had the Beach Boys. It was harmonic instruction. The Mamas and Papas, it was more vocal based because they used acoustic instruments. So that kind of played into our hands because we were instrumentalists and singers. We had to create the music that this band ostensibly created. We were impersonating a youth band, as it were. And we did two or three songs for the pilot. And the next thing I knew is the pilot had gotten uh, the highest rating since Mission Impossible. But that was really when Wes Farrell came in to yeah. take over the production. <laughs> and he had had several hits in New York. And, and he, he just, wrote Hang On Sloopy. He wrote Hang On Sloopy. Mm -hmm. And he came in and basically said, uh, do you guys want hit records or not? He was a very good pop writer, and I learned a lot from Wes Farrell. But I had to audition for him after the pilot sold. Um, so I brought my guitar, <laughs> and I played a Beatles song, I think. And I evidently passed the audition, because they called me the next day and said, um, we're going to start recording. I and remember the first time we heard him, we just went, we said, yes. yes. From that point on, it was David fronting and the four of us. And then we would track ourselves to create that blendy sound. Will there come a day when you and I can say we can finally see each other? Because the sound of the partridge to me is led by David. Yeah. I mean, he is, and he's got such a distinctive sound. He had a, a great twinkle in his voice. I wasn't at all surprised that he became the big star. go in and do the vocal, and what they would do is they'd slow the track down a quarter tone. I'd sing it in my voice, and then they'd bring it back to normal, so I sounded younger. We can make it, girl, I know we can. You know, 
I was in all the recording sessions, even though I didn't do most of the singing. I was basically a, you know, a background singer for David <laughs> most of the time. I want to look behind the Shirley recorded after everything was done. We could mix her in so that when you saw her, you knew she was singing. Because for the television show, they had to have her voice a little more in the uh, foreground. But for the records, they wanted to appeal to the young kids that they were selling records to, so her voice was not really there. I loved it, and I loved being associated with that kind of music at the time. Now and me, everybody, and hear us sing. Ironically, the first song I ever recorded was I Think I Love You. It goes from nowhere to number one in a week. And I get a call from my record company saying, Monster, Monster, Monster. As a matter of fact, it outsold the Beatles' Let It Be that year and was the nation's number one selling single. I don't think any of us had a clue that it would be the runaway success that it was, for that matter, for the rest of the first album. And I don't think that we knew we were involved in a phenomenon. Come on now and me, everybody. In the middle of an episode, I walked over to the recording studio to do Come On, Get Happy, which was the theme for the Partridge family. They had already cut the track. I listened to it once. I read the lyric, I went in and sang it once. Come on down and meet everybody. Come on, get happy. A whole lot of love in this world will be. That was it. Read it, sang it, was still in my makeup and the whole thing. It's probably in the studio six minutes. <laughs> the music was the key to the show, what made it different from other shows. It was the perfume of the show. Somebody sent me the Partridge Family's either greatest hits or our Christmas album or something, and I realized how good that music is, how enjoyable that music is. What we were after was a sound and a style that was all their own, and I think we did that. This might have been bubblegum, but it was very high calorie, high vitamin bubblegum. It was really a great marketing effort, and they had a great show, and I mean, it worked beautifully. It just was a mesh and a melding of all these elements that really made a hit sound.